Hello everyone, and welcome back to my show. get back on that 49 Chevrolet 3100 pickup and we're going to adjust the brakes the hook brakes so stay tuned and let's get busy all right I'm gonna give you a little background of my limited knowledge of the hook brake the hook brake is a style of brake that uh, GM, Chevrolet, and uh, General Motors, and probably all the GM products went to with uh, when they first went to juice brakes, uh, hydraulic actuated brakes. And I want to think it was sometime in the uh, 30s, maybe late 20s. Uh, you can look it up. But that style is what they ran all the way up until like 1951, I believe, when they went to the Bendix style, which is the more modern style. Uh, the, uh, the hook brakes, uh, of course, they have leading and trailing shoe, but they're the exact same shoe. Uh, Bendix has a, a specific leading and a specific trailing shoe, and they only fit that way. Hook brakes? They, uh, they're the exact same shoe on the front or rear. And uh, the old timers, one thing they do back in the day is uh, always, I believe it's the leading shoe will wear more than the trailing shoe. And when it gets to a point where uh, it's wore down pretty good, the old timers, they take and swap them around, put the trailing shoe on the front and the leading shoe on the rear. So that way they can, you know, pretty much double the lifespan of the, uh, of the brakes. Pretty slick. But anyway, hook brakes, they differ from uh, the Bendix style. And number one, they are not self-adjustable. In other words, the only way these are adjusted, hook, I'm talking about hook brakes now, the only way they are adjusted is for a technician, a mechanic, or you yourself get underneath there and you adjust them yourself. They won't back off. Yeah, they've got little spring clips that will keep the uh, star wheels, the adjusters from backing off, but they won't self-adjust more. So when the shoes wear, the, the, the uh, material on the brake shoes, uh, that gap widens and it doesn't make up for it. So your pedal gets more and more play to where you almost go to the floor before you get stopping power. How I know when my brakes uh, need adjusting is when I have to pump them to get them to break how they normally do. Now, these brake hook brakes, they break fine for me. I mean, uh, you know, this has still got the stock six cylinder and uh, well, it's not stock. It's maybe not quite double the horsepower, but it's still not set up to run on the interstate. I do run in modern traffic. I run on highways occasionally. But mainly I do back road cruising, and these brakes are more than adequate, even with the load, to stop me. But if this had a uh, more powerful, let's say, a V8 engine or a modern, modern six-banger, I would recommend upgrading to discs even. Put discs on the front, put bendits on the rear, and uh, there you're modernized. But if your drivetrain and your power it's pretty close to stock what it was. These hook brakes, I feel, work good enough. Another drawback, though, with the hooks, besides they don't self-adjust, is it's only a single reservoir master cylinder. In other words, you don't have two separate circuits like on modern master cylinders. You just have the one. So if you get a leak in the rear or either or the front, doesn't matter, you're going to lose all your fluid eventually. I mean, you're going to lose all your stopping power. It does not uh, separate the rear and the fronts. Uh, in 49, I believe, they went to a larger uh, wheel uh, uh, cylinder and a smaller in the rear. That way you'd get more stopping power in the front, and that's where you want your stopping power. 
So, but before 49, I think the wheel cylinders were the exact same size. Now, when I'm talking about a difference of size, I'm talking about maybe a 32nd of an inch, okay? But there is a difference from 49 up to the, I guess, 50, and then in 51, they went to the Bendix. So, and the third thing to keep in mind with the uh, hook brakes are that uh, you don't have one adjuster, you have two, okay? The leading, it, the leading shoe has its own adjuster, and the trailing shoe has its own adjuster. Now, I'm going to link to a video here that where when I did a, a either a maintenance or I replaced the brakes, and it'll show real easily. Uh, it should show clearly uh, the components of the hook brake. But the main thing to, rem to, uh, to know when you go to adjust your hook brakes, you're actually going to adjust both shoes independently on each wheel. So basically you have two adjustments per wheel, that's eight adjustments you'll have to do. With the old Bendix style, it was just, you know, four. One adjuster did both shoes. It's not that way on the hooks. So anyway, that video is gonna come up and uh, uh, you can look at that or you can skip past it and we're gonna crawl underneath this thing and we're going to, uh, we're going to adjust them brakes. So stay tuned and let's get busy again. Here, put the light where you can see it. There's your two adjusters you get from the back side. There's your teeth that the screwdriver engages through the slot on the back. All right, you turn, the, you turn them out to make them bigger, bring them in. Now these shoes, I really don't have to replace these shoes. They look good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. See, there ain't nothing wrong with these shoes. A little corner there, but that's not bad. I'm gonna take my micrometer. I can't really tell which side's wearing more than the other. Generally, you can. All right. Well, I may not do well. I don't know. I may go ahead and do it anyway, but they don't look like they need it. All right, now that you got a pretty basic idea of what the hook brakes look like on the inside, Let's get a couple of uh, special tools here and we'll crawl underneath here and take care of that business. I find that I do better with a straight slot screwdriver. But I'll also take this brake tool here. Good catch, huh? <laughs> but I find that I do better with this. So, Anyway, I like to leave drawers cracked somewhat open so I know where I know that they're uh, missing tools. So, okay, let's get underneath. All right, before I crawl under there, I'm going to get my cheat sheet. Now, since you've got to adjust each shoe independently, you turn the adjuster a different direction. The leading uh, shoe adjusts in a different direction than the trailing, and the left side does on the right now you can uh, memorize this but uh if you're getting uh getting a little long on the tooth like me you got to write stuff down so you make it uh copy this and make your own but uh, if you can see looking at the left front wheel in order to spread the shoe out i need to turn the adjuster up in order to spread this trailing shoe out i need to turn the adjuster down now that's the same for the rear okay on the left side. On the, reps, on the right side, it's just the complete opposite. The uh, leading shoe, you turn down to spread it out, and on the trailing shoe, you, you spin it up. Uh, and if for some reason you can't get your shoes off, and be, uh, your uh, drums off, because the shoes are spread too much, looking at the left front, I would spin this down, the leading shoe down, in order to bring it in and I uh, spin the trailing shoe up in order to bring it in. That'll bring them shoes in, get them off the drum, and you can pull the drum off easier. So anyway, 
So what we're going to do is once we get underneath here, we're going to turn the front, the leading shoe on the left front up to spread it out. And we're going to spin the adjuster wheel down on the trailing shoe. All right, I'm going to attempt to work around you. There's this, there's the one dust cover. There's the other. All right. Now, first off, I'm going to show you. I'm going to spin the wheel and watch how easily this spins. You see that? That's too much. All right. So what we want to do is adjust. We're going to start, we'll start with the leading shoe. The, what you need to do, according to the book, is you tighten that, uh, you expand the leading shoe out to the point where the wheel doesn't turn, and then you back it off to where it just starts to turn. So in order to spread it out, I need to spin that up. All right. The... And finding it sometimes working around this is fun. <laughs> but eventually I'll find it. There, I think that's it right there. Well. There. You can hear that it started dragging. Take it up some more. I can still spin it. A little more. Now I can barely spin it. All right. There. And now. I'm going to back it off just a little bit. All right. See, I want, it, I want it to spin maybe one full rotation. Then I want to hear a little contact. All right. I think I'm good with that front one. Now I'm going to do the exact same to the rear, and uh, which is right here. I think you can see it perhaps. Let me move you a little different right here all right now i take him down all right in order to tighten him up so let's see if i can get in there gotta work around that steering He didn't take much at all, so you can tell pretty much that the leading shoe does the majority of the breaking. Okay, we'll back him off. A little bit more. That's where I want it. About one full rotation, and I can hear the brake back in contact. All right. That's where I want him, so I'm going to move over to the next side. But you kind of get the idea. Hope you can see that. All right, this is over on the right side, or passenger side, if you will. May can see this better because of the... No pitman arm hanging down and tie rod connection. So let's see. Now, since we're on the right side, we're going to spin the leading shoe, which is this side right here, this this one. We're going to spin him down in order to tighten him. Look how loose he is. All right, so we're going to spin him down. And then the trailing shoe, we're going to spin up. All right. 
that I'm hitting the microphone. Right, let's see if I can. All right, there's. I got to him easy. That's pretty much where I want him. All right, now I'm gonna spin him up, and I bet you, like the other side, it probably won't uh, take much. Just a hair. A little more. Now what will happen if you got one tighter than the other, of course it'll it'll pull. So it's kind of not an exact science. Should have showed you my how much play I had in my my brake pedal. What I sh it should be taking up now mainly you get more of your with uh oh I knocked this loose did I don't know how much I got There you go. Uh, mainly with uh, discs in the front and bendix in the back, you get your strong pedal from adjusting the rears. Now, since these are drums all the way around, all four affect how much free tra pedal travel you have. So now we're going to move back to the rears since I got the fronts good. And we'll carry on. All right, it's going to be hard to make them out because I'm trying to look around everything. But there's the dust cover right here. My finger's pointed. For the leading shoe and the trailing shoe, uh, dust cover is right there where I'm pointing. So I'm going to pull them out, set this back, and hopefully I can get a good shot of it. Okay, well, there's here's one of the here's the right rear, and I'm trying to get a good angle to see, and there's just hardly any room when you're laying on your back. <laughs> so anyway, so we're on the right side, we're on the rear. Let me double check my cheat sheet sheet here. All right. Bring them up here. So what I want to do is take my leading shoe down to spread it out. That is my right side, correct? Yep. And I want my trailing shoe up to spread it out. So I want to take my leading shoe down. All right. Let's see, first off, look how, how easy he is. I already did the other side. A little more. A 
based on the way the adjustments go, definitely the leading shoe wears before than the trailing. There. There. Where I want it. Now I want to take this other one up. See, I like to hear the shoes making contact. They'll uh, they'll burn them in enough clearance after a couple miles, so you don't have to. Uh, I think the book says to back them off until they freely spin, and uh, I don't think it's uh, that's not the way I do it. Can't get my hand up there. <laughs> I got it up there to get it back. As you can see, it's a whole lot easier to do this up on a do this up on a lift. All right. Now let's go see what the pedal feels like. All right, let's check that pedal out now. Oh, that's a hundred percent better. It's about an inch. I think the book calls for three quarters of an inch, maybe to an inch. I'll give us an inch. I'll take that. And the parking brake ought to be a whole lot better, too. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now let's check the fluid. All right, there you go. I couldn't hardly show you, but there's the master cylinder. And uh, you can see that's the, uh, she's topped off. I had to put a little bit in there. I always like it uh, topped off. Now I don't necessarily I don't see any leaking spots, so I'm just going to guess uh, that uh, just gets what gets out between the seals, and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll we'll test it out and go from there. All right. Well, that'll bring us to a close of this little procedure. Uh, hopefully, uh, I've not seen this in the editing yet so hopefully you could see the uh getting that screwdriver up in there i just had better luck using a straight slot screwdriver than using that fancy uh brake adjustment tool it just it bends it just where it will hit the axle or hit the axle stop or hit the lever action shock or hit the pitman i mean if something was always in the way using that where the straight slot screwdriver just 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 would work so anyway, again, I hope uh, hope it comes through good. I hope you find it uh, helpful in trying to keep your old stove boat truck running. Again, these uh, these hook brakes uh, under its normal power. If you're running the stock 235 or 216 or even 261 engine, the stock transmission and rear end. Uh, these hook brakes are uh, they're they're more than adequate enough to stop you and uh, to allow you to run in modern traffic and uh, run your back roads, maybe even the occasional highway. Uh, I have taken this out on the uh, interstate a couple times just to see the top end, but 
I'm still running the 411 rear end in this thing, so it's uh, it's really spinning to get up there uh, to 70 and above. So uh, I, I avoid the interstate. But for back road cruising, uh, running in traffic around town, going to and fro to car shows and such, these hook brakes, just keep them adjusted. Keep an eye on the fluid. I mean, always check it. Uh, you know, do like a pre-flight. And uh, you ought to be all right. Now, uh, there are many kits out there where you can go with the dual uh, reservoir master cylinder. You can put discs on the front. You can put Bendix on the back. I mean, you can bring it all up to uh, modern standards, and there ain't a thing, a thing wrong with that. Uh, as long as you got the jing jing, have at it. <laughs> but anyway, again, the hook brakes will work okay as long as you keep them properly serviced. So... I hope everything's going good with you and yours. Everything is going good here. Had a storm blow through the other day. Took my power. I took two trees. I actually took three trees down, two of which contacted my power line and my cable and my telephone. And uh, I'm waiting for the last of that uh, to get straightened up. Went a couple of days without power. And, uh, well, uh, we... Lord was looking out after us. He gave us uh, 60 degree days and 40 degree evenings. So we, we didn't uh, we didn't even have to fire up the fireplace. So anyway, so yes, everything's going good here. Can't complain. Won't do me no good to complain anyway. Just carry on and take care of the business. So have a good one, and I hope to see you around on the next one. See you.